Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back. Uh, I got a great guest. I got uh, Mary D here on the Mary D Show. In just a couple seconds, I'm going to get to her. She's got a great topic today, but you guys know Mary D. She is the founder at the Mad Love Agency, and uh, you can go to maryd with two es.com. And uh, what she does is she has so many uh, different ideas and uh, to me, they're very encouraging and inspiring because she works with like CEOs all over the place and goes into your business and, and, and helps businesses get to be their best because she's been uh, studying this and been around this for, for, um, for, for many years and, and been so successful. She's at the top of her game. She's a public speaker. And when you start to hear what she has to say, you guys will know what I'm talking about. So uh, she's got a, a terrific a topic for today. I'm very excited to hear about that. Uh, the founder of the Mad Love Agency. It's the Mary D Show. I want you to call in 631-730-7376 or get me on instant feedback. I'm blind, so I can't see it. So my producer will read them. Uh, your question live on the air and Miss Mary D will uh, respond. Uh, right on the air live. So guys, with no further ado, it is my honor and privilege to bring back to the show on the Mary D show, the lovely Miss Mary D. Hey, Mary, what's going on? Hey, Casey, feeling good, feeling strong, coming back from a strong holiday. <laughs> what you doing on the holiday? Anything good? You know, I relaxed and that was exactly what I needed. And so I think that's, you know, such an important piece that, um, that not everyone dives into, right? We think, ah, oh, it's a holiday. We got to do all the things. But you know <laughs> what? Give yourself permission to not have to do all the things. Like if you need the rest, take the rest, door dash it instead of grilling. If that means you need that kind of break, uh, you know, we're cut, from the, we're cut from the same loins, my friend, because I, uh, I, I, I totally uh, agree with what you're saying i uh, that's it seems to be like a lot of people think oh well, you have to do this you have to do that but what about a day of just relaxing and mm -hmm. just, you know uh, just recharging because a lot yeah. of times we don't get that right and as that's you right. as someone who's someone who's always out there always talking to people always busy you needed it probably yeah it's for sure you know i i feel like there's this idea of success that exists in the world and it's one that's fed to us by all these kind of external factors, right? Like we watch movies and, and when we watch a movie, we see success as people who are super wealthy or that can, you know, afford fancy cars and homes. And not that those aren't fantastic things and they certainly can be a measure of success, but also how can we lean in and redefine success for what it actually means for us, right? Because at the, at the end of our life, or as we get older, even reflecting back, can you look back and, and see the spaces where you say, hmm, like these were the really important things. It was actually not the, the client meeting I needed to take, but going to my kid's soccer game or it's the, you know, relationships that we're able to build and foster, not this, you know, extra uh, five hours we do in the office over our eight hours, because we're trying to climb some ladder or impress someone or to be good enough. And this is something that so many people struggle with, which is the, the shame around, am I good enough? You know, will I ever be good enough because I don't look like X or I'm not having the things so-and-so is having and I'm 40 or I'm 30 or I'm whatever. I, I'm really surprised because lately from my mentorship students, what's actually been showing up is these young, young professionals. And we're talking barely hitting 25 but they're, they're entrepreneurs and they're brilliant and they're really just getting started. But for some reason in their mind, they're feeling like they should have, you know, hit six figures or seven figures already by the time they're 25. Yeah, it's not happening fast enough, right? Because everything we see on the internet seems like success is overnight. And I think that it's important to really draw the reality out of it typically doesn't happen overnight. It mm -hmm. might seem that way because of the way a storyline is set up or because someone is selling you something, right? There's a marketing message that says, oh, but you can do it all fast. Yeah, I mean, no one wants to do it slow. I get that. We all, we all want it all to show up now. Mm -hmm. But in, with media, I think we have to remember that this is where people have the, the ability to 
to crunch a timeline down from what, what it really was. Most businesses take years to get up and running. Um, many of them will hit, you know, t- two or three years in and, and not have cash flow, which is why it's important that businesses have, you know, a kitty built up, whether that's from saving from the, the money that they've got brought in, or they have a credit line that they can work with, um, whether they have a little loan that they can get, because sometimes it's just time, it's consistency. And so I get these, these guys, and they're all having quarter life crises, you know, and I'm like, Oh, gosh, wow, a quarter life crisis. I, I, I thought we'd wait till we're 50 or 60 yeah. for these, but they're happening so much sooner. And so it's really just a call out to that generation and, and even generations past that. It's like redefine success for yourself. Figure out like what is actually really important to you. There's a um, there's a network marketing company out there called Melaleuca, and uh, I've I haven't worked with Melaleuca. I don't I'm not. A, a it rep, is in the plug. I, I, I have no. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, plugging them in, in right. some sort of way from that. I got you. But, But what I do love about them is they have this core value that they work with. And when they reward their people, they do it through things like um, a college fund or buying your first, you know, new used car. Like they've got these really practical things like pay off your mortgage, you know? Yeah. So they're, they're really helping people with the more practical things that actually give people a great lifestyle. Uh, You don't necessarily grounded, right? Yes. Keep them grounded. Yes, yes. And and because the what well, I always laugh, I said the 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 evolution of an entrepreneur is typically that, you know, you first you, you pop out into the world and you're like, okay, I'm meant for more and I can do it myself because I'm not uh, I'm psychologically unemployable. You know, I've, I've lost every job because I just, I I'm so like creative and I've got these ideas and I know they're going to hit and it's like, okay, that's great. First recognition. And then the second one is, okay, but I don't know what I'm selling yet. So maybe I will join a network marketing company, or maybe I'll try to start to look for a business I can be part of, or I start in sales. And then usually they, they figure out what they're going to do, or they, they figure out how to make their mark in the world. And then they go, Ooh, now I have money and I'm going to buy some things. Cause that's going to feel good. They buy the things and then they go, Oh, well now I figured out how to make money, but it's actually not the things that feel good. It's the actual relationships. It's the actual quality time. It's the actual act of giving back to others. And so it's always an interesting thing to watch that journey and seeing this scale really crunch down to this generation that's that's really struggling to to feel good enough and feel like they're going to be able to you know leave a strong legacy and with them I would say oh honey like redefine success for yourself go back and and decide on not what the noise is telling you not what everyone is is trying to bring into your awareness but for yourself like what feels good to you would it feel good to have uh, you know, a small piece of land, would it feel good to live on a community with other people, right? Like shared in, in more than just a roommate, but a true community where maybe you share meals and cook each night together and you, you know, sp- split up what needs to be done on the property, or you hire a chef who comes in and cooks for everyone, right? right. There's so many ways you can get creative with that. Um, so I, I really think that's just an important piece because otherwise people do, they, they shut down their computer at night, they lay in bed and cry and go, wow, why don't I look like X influencer or so-and-so? And it's just not always realistic. And so it's, it's, I feel like there needs to be more of that, more real more real influencers who are sharing the things that aren't so beautiful all the time and sharing that the journey can be difficult and hard. It can also be an ease and flow. That's where we want it to be. But recognizing that most hard work, it takes time. It, it does take a few sacrifices in there. And, uh, and it's about being able to, to wake up every day and lean into a really strong habit or a good habit that keeps you from having to get in that am I motivated cycle. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, yeah there, was a, there was a lot in there to unpack, but there's two things that I really wanted to ask you. Uh, first one is, um, do you think that an entrepreneur is going to have to suffer a little bit in the beginning? Uh, do you, is that mostly what you find? Because you, you have a men- mentorship pro- program. Mm-hmm. Is that where people really need a mentor to lean on you when it, the times aren't so great to kind of show them, hey, you're going you're gonna to sacrifice for a little while. Because it's it doesn't happen to everybody. Everyone doesn't hit it big right away. I mean, you might suffer for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it, it really depends on the, the person that's coming to the table, right? So you have those professionals who are already in their 
their line of work and they just want to, they want to scale up that leadership a little faster than how it's going. And they don't really have the tools to do that. And so those are my favorite folks to work with because they have a team, they're in a business. Now we can talk about leadership. We can talk about frameworks that will give them the edge. We can talk about um, working through any of the walls that they hit and how to deal with those. I mean, you name it. I've been through lawsuits. I've been through crazy HR stories. We might have to do an episode on just that's a, that's crazy a good, HR yeah. stories. I know that's a good one. I was going to say, I think we'd have lots of callers for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just, and you know, figuring out like how do you make teams work together and how do you deal with those uh, go- you, you know, gossip at the water cooler, which we've talked about before. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's having someone who's been in that seat and who can just really hear you, who can see you and also help you go down the trajectory that you want to go down. Um, Sometimes, you know, people enter into a business and they're amazing at what they do. Like, let's say that a great project manager comes on board, but really their future, what they're headed for is they want to have their, their own business. Let's pretend they're entrepreneurial in that mentorship program. Of course, we're going to focus on being the best they can in the business that they're in, but we also want to nurture those dreams so that they have enough runway. And one day when they're confident enough, they're going to go, you know what? I feel like I've learned everything I can learn from this business I'm in. Now I'm ready to launch my own, or now I'm ready to move on maybe to a a different kind of business or a bigger kind of business. And that's the other piece too. Sometimes people get locked into work that they're great at, but they don't love it. And so how do we also go back and get in, how do we love the work that we're doing? And the way we do that is by having a deep sense of purpose and still showing up and being able to live in purpose, no matter what the actual work is. And so that's the confusion I think that comes across for a lot of people. You can still have something you're really passionate about and that you, you know, let's pretend it's, you know, building homes for the homeless. Like you can still go build homes for the homeless. It doesn't mean you have to do it as your, your vocation, but if you include it in your life versus saying, oh, I'm going to wait till I'm old to X, Y, Z, then now you're sprinkling this purpose and joy into your life, into your regular life. And it, and it should be important enough that you're making time for it. Cause that's really where a lot of that grounding happens as, and where you can feel successful because you're able to do the thing that your heart is really calling you to do. Gotcha. Now, Mary, before we get to your awesome topic today, uh, let me go to my producer. I believe he's got some instant feedback. Do you got some people coming in through? Um, yes. Okay. Um, we have Corey from Utah. He asked, or she asked, um, what do you think is a healthy way to gauge your own success? Hmm. So first off, you have to define success for yourself, right? That's the first thing. And so how are you how are you defining success? Well, different for everybody, right? Different for everybody. Yeah. Different for everybody. And then based on that, now you can say, what are results that I would like to have based on this definition I have of success, right? So it's work results. Are you talking about uh, anything, anything, whatever it is, any, this can literally apply to anything in your life. Okay. So So let's use a fun one, right? So maybe I would consider it successful if I could, uh, you know, get married in the next five years. Let's pretend that's a goal, right? Because we have people out there who who family plan, they want to have babies. It's a goal. It's a goal. So if if it's that particular item, then what does success look like to you, right? So is it just the act of getting married? I would encourage all of you that that's not where it actually ends. That should just be like the, the, the tip of the iceberg, but like quality. Yeah. Yeah. Like (laughs) who do you want, who do you want to show up into your life? What qualities would they have? So this is, if you know those things, then you can know when they're going to show up and when they show up in your life, you'll be able to recognize them and you'll be like, Oh my gosh, this is the, this is what I wrote about. This is what I want. Yeah. 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 I wanted, you know, this guy who's, six foot two and tall, dark, and handsome. And he loves puppies. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ladies, my number is, uh, uh, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Sorry. 
love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. So there's, you know, all these little details. It's like, what are you really visioning for yourself? So envision in your mind and hold that that beautiful vision for yourself of what success actually looks like. Because if your brain can create it and see it, then it can start to really believe that it's possible. And that's the biggest part is how do we revisit what success looks like for us? How do we redefine it for us? Again, what, what you really want, not what the world says you need, not the media says you need, not what your neighbors and your best friends say that you need, but what do you actually need? Because you're the one that's going to have to live with that decision. So whatever piece of however you define success, then let those be milestones for you to break them down into smaller chunks so you can see what they actually look like. And then start making steps towards having that level of success. So if it's you want to run a business someday, then maybe your first step, especially if you have no business sense whatsoever, is to go take a course on business, right? And so there's so much available these days in courses and you can get stuff, you know, even free. You can, there's your small business administration website in most places is going to have lots of free resources. Start, you know, networking, start meeting business people that you enjoy seeing and learning from. Go watch that blog, go read a book by Warren Buffett. There's all kinds of steps we can make that put us in the direction of the thing that we want. Mary, do you remember what yours was before you got so successful? Do you remember when you were just starting out, what was your drive? What was, what was it? Mine was my mom. It was buying my mom a house. That was actually one of my first big goals because my dad, you know, she lived in this, I mean, we had a teeny tiny house when I was growing up and then her and my stepdad ended up moving, um, across the state and they, he had this, this little, this little double wide trailer, that he had when he was single and they decided to take that across and they were going to use it as a rental, but instead they moved into it initially. And it actually broke my heart a little bit, Casey, because it wasn't like a nice mobile home park. It was a little sketch, like on the outskirts of town. And I remember being 17 and I I had moved back to Texas and sitting there and I cried the first night because I was like, my mom has worked so hard in her life like this can't be, this can't be the You're thing. Like, I'm not going to let her live this way. I'm, I'm not going to, that's right. I'm not going to let my mom live this way. And so it was, gosh, probably within the next five years, let's see, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay. Next six years, I hit six figures. And uh, sure enough, what do you think I did? I went and put a down payment on a house What's and that? moved them into it. And they actually still live in that house today. They love it. My mom's actually has a very emotional attachment to the house because, because of that. But that was a big one. That was a really big one. I, I wanted to bless my mom. She's worked so hard her whole life and been a great example for me. And that was a good one. It was a good one to really, my why was so deep. And <laughs> we, we're doing this. We we have we're we are on this train to. Well, you you couldn't have done that without the discipline that they showed you, and and uh, and, the, and the dedication that you. you oh, mom. it definitely was lots of dedication and discipline. I mean, I you know I worked from home, so I'm grateful for that. But there, it also means I worked a lot because yeah. I was you know single and home alone, and it was like, what do you do? You you really put it all into your work, and um, but as I've gotten older too, I think having good habits. And really understanding, like, what are our goals? How do we break them down into chunks? And how do we break them down into daily bite-sized pieces so that we can know what our numbers are going to be? And not enough people pay attention to those numbers. And so that's another thing in the mentorship program we talk about is knowing your numbers, knowing your goals, and how are you going to get there? And what does it look like? What What does success look like? That's an inspirational story, and it's pretty awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Really cool. Mr. Producer, you got another instant feedback for us? Yeah, I have a question and a comment, so I'll read the comment first. Let me guess the comment is, uh, we we love uh, Mary J. Thank you. She's going to be on here. She's going to be your co-host. All right, okay. It came in. Uh, I think but, I, by the way, <laughs> I'm just saying because everyone loves you. That's fine. Ah, uh, thanks. Um, it came in as you were finishing the story. Um, Christopher from Queens, he says, that story about you bringing it home to your mother brought a tear to my eye. You're oh. there uh that is awesome and dude uh, what's his name uh, christopher. christopher thank you for writing that because uh you i would have said the same thing thank you yeah yeah sean from brooklyn he goes do you offer services that teach others how to build patience and if so what does that service look like hmm, that's a great question 
Patience is a funny thing. Uh, I, I will say this. I, I was super blessed with that being just sort of part of my DNA around patience, but I, uh, learned this exercise a long time ago. I actually had to do an exercise with my best friend where we bend a piece of rebar together. And I know right now, some of you are like, wait, what? And some of you are saying, what's rebar. And then the other, the others of you are going, wait, bend rebar. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So, there's this energetic teamwork exercise. And we, we do this at some of my events where you put a piece of rebar. So imagine a, a rebar is that metal, that twisty metal that goes into concrete to make sure it gets like formed right and everything stays together. So this little piece of, and it's very hard. Like if you tried to put it in your hands and bend it, like no it's not, you got to be like, you'd have to be ultra, super crazy. Yeah, strong. yeah, yeah. It's, it's what goes in cesspools and stuff, right? Yeah, it goes in all kinds of, of yeah. construction. So you, you put one end in your your throat, in the soft of your throat, which only requires, I think it's 15 pounds of pressure to crush your, your windpipe. Oh, and the other person puts it on theirs. And you you the act is that you've got to breathe in sync together. You've got to really be on the same page when it comes to communication. And then you both step in at the same time. And when you do that, it creates this inertia and this force that actually bends the rebar into a U. And for years, I've had many rebars hanging on my wall. And one day I was like, okay, I've got this. I, I, I get it. <laughs> they took all the rebars down because there are so many, but it's a great act of, of really communication and synergy with another person. And it does require patience because what happens is if one person hesitates, it hurts. It leaves a red mark. It starts to just like rub the area. And I did it with one of my best friends. And I remember I was so annoyed with her because I thought we got this, yeah. like no problem. We got this. And it threw it. I mean, it took us many times, like she's crying and I'm getting upset because I'm like, <laughs> oh, we got this. But that was a great lesson in patience because what I said was, you know what? in life, sometimes we're at a place where we're like, I'm ready to go. And I've got all, I've got the answers. I know how to move forward with this, but the people that are with us may not feel that way. That so we have to stop and have the patience of sharing the vision. Right. And that was a big part of it is her and I stopping and me sharing the vision of, Hey, you can do this. I've actually done this many times before. And I want you to know that we can do it, but here's what the deal is. We have to do it at the same time because otherwise we're going to keep hurting each other. And like, will you just trust me? Right. So it's this real lesson in patience and trust. And, and that is one of the activities that um, from a retreat side, I love to do, but yes, that's absolutely one of the things we go over in my mentorship program. We're going to talk through um, actually a customized program. So I have obviously the frameworks uh, around confidence and around leadership, but within that, we actually talk very specifically to the student about what are your specific outcomes that you really want to achieve from working together. And wow. if patience is one of them, we absolutely weave that in because everything is interconnected. And uh, I believe in the holistic view. You know, when I, uh, if you go to the doctor, you've got one that treats you for your hands, one that treats you for your throat, one that treats you for your eyes. Yeah. But in life, we're not just each piece of our body. We are our whole self. And so how do we come into this and say, if you're coming for business coaching, that's fine. But really what else is going on? Because if something is falling short in business, let's say it's follow through. My guess is that it's also showing up in your life somewhere. Yeah. If your business relationships are tough, it's probably there's some parallels in your personal life. And so totally. how do we get down to the root of those things and heal them? How do we yeah. heal them? And how do we work together on accepting the parts that aren't so beautiful too. And so much of this journey is about surrender. So much of it is about acceptance and just allowing yourself to be like, be who you are. The, the pain comes in when we're out of alignment and we're trying to be somebody else yeah, <laughs> or something yeah. else when we're really designed to just be ourselves and find that the right puzzle pieces, right? If we're all one big puzzle piece, we've just got to go find where our little section is and connect with those around us so we can create that full picture that feels really good. Gotcha. Guys, uh, we're at the Mary D show with Mary D, the, uh, the lovely Mary D. She can be reached if you go to the website, Mary D with two E's, Mary D.com. Mary, we're at the end of our time here, but uh, I always like to uh, thank you for sharing all those stories and 
uh, your your uh, expertise. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're 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 so good at what you do. Uh, but um, I always want to give you the last word here. The word here. So my uh, as my grandmother always told me, and I told you this before. She used to say, "Whoever was talking, say, okay, Casey, you have the floor." So, Mary, you have the floor. I love it. I love it. As Casey said, you can go to my website at maryd.com. That's M-A-R-Y-D-E-E. You're welcome to follow me on Instagram at B Mary D. You can also find me across most social platforms there. And last but not least, for those of you who are interested in mentorship, you're interested in, you know, having living your best life. Really, that's it. It's living your best life as who you authentically are so that you can show up in your fullest expression. Then uh, we also have a text opt in at 760 566 Mary. That's 760 566 6279. And uh, would love to explore the possibilities so that we can all live our best life. Awesome. Uh, Mary D, you are such a great guest and a great person. I love seeing your smiling face every time and i can't wait to, to hear what you have to say next thanks Daisy. we'll be right back guys broadcasting from the business capital of the world this is the podcast business news network for nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans everyday life has become filled with barriers Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.